right then this is an another technique which uh, still not yet published we are under processing of publishing this is the first time we try to do this conjunctive use modeling using stochastic dynamic programming right even though we have the soft computing techniques or um, whatever machine learning all these things still we are unable to do this conventional stochastic dynamic programming which gives which may give you a better result than your soft computing techniques the only problem here is the curse of dimensionality when i increase the number of variables my matrix size goes on increasing in soft computing techniques we are not solving any matrix here we try to solve the matrix in optimization when my matrix size is larger and larger my software or my computer may not be able to take care three dimensional matrix four dimensional matrix in such cases we say that it's a curse of dimensionality manually it is possible but it that means small problems we can solve large complex problems we cannot solve using this type of sdp models right so in this sdp model we have considered the stochasticity of inflow as well as stochasticity of ground water level variations as i have explained the same case study of sri ram sagar project has been taken to find out what is the effect of considering the stochasticity in inflow as well as uh, ground water level variations uh, i think this many people knows that what is stochastic dynamic programming if i have explained what is dynamic programming if i need a sequential decision and if i incorporate the stochasticity in the inflow into the dynamic programming i call this as stochastic dynamic programming there are two ways of incorporating this stochasticity into the dynamic programming one is called explicit stochastic dynamic programming another one is implicit stochastic dynamic programming explicit stochastic dynamic programming is we never say that or uh, we we say that this is the chance of probability of occurrence with respect to time then that probability is directly coupled with my model that means we are explicitly saying that this is the stochasticity of my inflow then such type of models are called stochastic um, explicit stochastic dynamic programming whereas implicit stochastic dynamic programming many people says that if i develop a deterministic dynamic programming that means develop only these are operation rules for only one set of inflow and then you use a simulation model to simulate the condition for longer length and derive the regression equation of relation between inflow and release that they here we never say that this is the probability of occurrence this is the stochasticity of inflow but we are trying to capture the stochasticity in terms of regression equations such types of models are called implicit stochastic dynamic programming people have tried both and in some places it explicit works better in some places implicit works better so many people have consider the surface water as the stochastic variable it's very easy to model the problem here is how to consider this stochastic model i have a reservoir i have an inflow then i have the release so instead of carrying out for one inflow variable and one storage variable and one release variable i discretize my inflow into n number of stages that means if my inflow is this level and the storage is this much what will be the release then i start discretizing my inflow from minimum level to maximum level this may be two times three times four range five range or six range then i may have a six range of inflow then i may have a six range of storage then i may have six range of inflow suppose if my inflow is in first range and storage is in fifth range what is the release which is the optimum because my decision of next month depends upon previous month it is not just solving this matrix of 6 by 6 by 6 it is finding the optimal number of 6 by 6 by 6 so it is searching the solution within this that is why even if i consider only six discretization then the matrix to be solved is 6 by 6 six times 
So that means my computer, you can find out how many times it has to do the iteration. So here we consider the objective function maximizing irrigation release and groundwater pumpage. That means finding the deviation is lesser. Here the stages are time periods. Normally in stochastic dynamic programming, we never start from the first. That means for every reservoir operation, there is a period that is called stabilization period. After that only the releases becomes constant or independent of inflow. That period is called as an steady state period. I assume that the steady state period has occurred at longer period and I work backwards. Before that how to achieve this steady state, how I have to modify the inflows in each and every month so that my release at end of this time period is steady state. Right? So this is my recursive relationship that means when I am here my objective is to maximize the release for each and every month and also to maximize the groundwater pumpage. Since the study area is Sriram Sagar project, you know that is a waterlogged area, my first priority is groundwater. This is deterministic. But when I am at second period, when I am at this period, my objective function not only depends upon the best value of this one, it also depends upon the stochasticity of inflow at these points. Right? So that is why when I am at T time period, that is, it is the seasonal time period. You see this one, this 12, it will go on reducing. Once we reach the first year, then again it starts from next previous year, 12 month. So this is the time period or time step in my model. And this is the number of stages remaining to obtain my steady state policy. This goes on increasing only. So there also my objective function is function of two state variable. It is a two state problem. Most of the surface water are only one state variable. Right? States are release as well as groundwater pumpage. It says that what happens at that current time period for surface release as well as for groundwater release which is equal to maximization of this is that period T and this is the probability or best result during time period T plus 1 that is previous time period or previous stage multiplied with respect to its probability and this probability is called transition probability. Transition probability is nothing but it is the probability with respect to time. What is the probability of inflow of this range in June month to July month? So you have to construct a transition probability matrix. So for a monthly flow model, if I consider 6 ranges in my inflow, then I will have a 12 matrix of 6 by 6. I have to pick up a particular value to multiply it with the particular ranges. All these things has to be kept in the memory of my computer to solve this. So here transition probability of inflow is this one. Similarly, the transition probability of groundwater also we consider. Since we have three zones, I have to, that is groundwater is three canals. So I have to consider the probability of each and every canal separately. And here the stages, ranges are considered as, as I have explained, we have estimated what is the groundwater available in each one meter cake. So here our ranges are five. If my groundwater level this month is one, what is the probability of my groundwater level going to be in second meter next month? What is the probability of my groundwater going to be in three meters in next month? That probability we have to work it out. These transition probabilities are worked out from the historical data. So we model this in terms of lag on Markovian processes. Computational strategies, the major set setback in the application of dynamic programming is curse of dimensionality. As I said, we have to work it out large number of three dimensional matrices. It's very difficult to pick up a particular values to the required. Manually it is very easy, but for a computer it has to go through a range. Even if you start writing your program, you can put a matrix of n, i, j, i, j, k, 
maximum 3. After that, even for 3 matrix, 3 by 3 matrix, 3 by 3 by 3 by 3 matrix. If you want to find out the inverse of this, then our computers will say that it is very difficult. So, what happens now to overcome this curse of dimensionality? We suppose if I consider each and every well as a that is possible. I have 688 wells in my command area. I can consider the stochasticity of each and every well. Then I will have 688 matrix of 5 by 5, which is almost impossible. So, what we try to do is we try to consider this as a single matrix by 5 by 5. For that, I cannot consider all the variables, all the groundwater all variation as a single well. I cannot average it. So, to do this average, there are many techniques are available. One important technique is called cluster analysis. That means we are clustering the spatial and temporal variation of groundwater which are having common water level variations. So, the water levels which have the same range of variation are clubbed and taken together as a single well. That means uh, mathematically I am reducing 688 observation wells into five different zones which has same variations with a variation ranging within the deviations. Right? So, based upon that cluster analysis, we discretized the initial storage, storage in the reservoir as seven ranges and releases as seven ranges and groundwater levels as five ranges. So, my matrix to be picked up is seven by seven by five. So, this cluster analysis is called, so called as grouping of wells. We classified the wells which are having homogeneous groundwater level variation within the standard deviation of their average. Many softwares are available. In SSP softwares, we can do this cluster analysis. Even people have tried applying fuzzy logic technique for this cluster analysis. Suppose if my range is within this, how to club, whether it has to be clubbed in one range or mm, second range. Separate research is also going on. Because if I do not do this cluster analysis, since I have 644 wells, my matrix will be 644 by 644. None of the computer will find even the transfer of this matrix, transpose of this matrix. Then as usual, the termination criteria. So, what happens? I go on finding out what is the best value considering all the stochasticity. How to find out whether I have obtained my steady state or not? That is called termination criteria. I find the steady state if my releases of this 12th month and this 12th month are same. Then I call that as steady state policy for 12th month. Then I have to check for 11th month. Then I have to check for 10th month. So, if I find the difference between this value and this value and 11th month and 11th month, not only the releases, the difference between the objectives of this 12 month and this 12 month and for all the months should be same. That means if I consider this one, the net benefit of time period T and N plus 2 that is previous year, all the best benefits minus of this current month, everything should be constant for any type of range. Right? So, it is I know it is very difficult to visualize, but when we do that, we will come to know that. So, my objective function here is maximizing the surface water release and groundwater pumpage subjected to the constraints. First one is demand constraint that means release should be less as the demand to be met from either surface water release or groundwater pumpage. We divided into five zones groundwater also. Then surface water releases these are all general constraint which any DP program can also take. These constraints will help us in removing the scenarios which are not possible. So, that I no need to work it out for 7 by 7 by 5 matrix. Many matrices it may not be possible. For example, if my inflow is 7th range and the storage is also at the 7th range, what is the release? I do not need that much of release. So, I need no, no need to search my solution in that space. Or if my inflow is at the first range, and storage is also in the first range and release is in the first range. That is not possible because my demand has to be met. That release may not be possible. 
So this constraint will help us to curtail down our matrix size. Then groundwater constraints, all the groundwater which you are pumping should be more than or equal to the groundwater available within 3 meter. So that all my area are free from waterlogging condition. Then storage constraint. So considering the stochasticity, if I go back, so I can consider based upon these two stochastic. If I don't consider this stochastic, that will become a deterministic dynamic programming. Then I can consider the stochasticity of surface water alone or stochasticity of groundwater alone. Or I can consider the stochasticity of both. So depending upon that, we had six different scenarios. If I see that, then for each and every scenarios, we have to run the model and we have to get the optimal operating policy. Optimal operating policy is nothing but it will give you the which state where which state is the inflow and which state is the storage for that you will have release required release for each and every month. It gives you a set of tabular solution. As such we cannot implement it in the field. What you have to do is we have to see how this solution optimal solution is working in the field. That is what it is called optimization simulation model. Now we have finished the optimization. Now we have to simulate this condition in the real life. In this real life, in simulation what is this? We have a set of operating rules derived from optimization model implement in the field. To implement in the field, the only input required is the inflow. Generate the inflow using various techniques. That is where we can use our AN, GP or whatever it is. Here we used simple Thomas fairing model which can be very useful in uh, generating uh, inflow into a seasonal rivers. Right? For seasonal uh, inflow rivers, we can still em employ this Thomas fairing model very successfully. So we try to see the scenario for 200 years. We developed for 210 years. First 10 years is discarded to take care of the initial condition. So this is the comparison of generated inflow and historical inflow. The mean, standard deviation, skewness, this should be same. Then only I can assume that generated inflow properties or uh, generated inflow uh, represent the historical inflow. So this is the demand and uh, if I consider various operational policies, FID is frequency of irrigation deficit, AID is average irrigation deficit, PID is percentage irrigation deficit. That means if I consider 2400 and 2400 months, that means for 200 years, 200 into 12 months, that means I am running my system for 2400 months. That means I have operated my reservoir for 200 years. Then for each and every month, I can find out what is the release. I know what is the demand, find the difference. This is the statistical properties. So if I use only deterministic dynamic, then my rule says that this many months, I will have deficit in the system. Out of 2400 months, the number is very less frequency, but you see the percentage of deficit, it is 100%. Out of 200 years, one year will be, we don't know in which year it has occurred. 15 months will be 100% deficit, you cannot release. If I consider my stochasticity in the inflow, the number remains the same, but the percentage reduces to its 50%. I may not have 100% deficit, but still I have 50 to 60% of deficit during these months. Not all the months, very less periods. If I consider the deterministic model, my scenario does not improve. That means my stochastic model, that's what in reality it happens. In reality, there is no 100% deficit. It is only 50%, 60% or 40% deficit that was well captured in this model. So if I consider deterministic surface water and groundwater, I have 100% deficit for very few months. In this case, the percentage of this has not increased since I have used conjunctive use, the number of months the deficit occurs reduced. And this is considering the stochasticity in surface water, almost many months you are free from deficit. This is the best scenario, not this one. This is the best scenario. Stochasticity in surface water, 
as well as stochasticity in groundwater. So even if I consider the stochasticity, it is almost impossible to eliminate the deficit. There will be some amount of deficit. So that will be around 50 to 30 percent only for two or four months out of 200 years. That will be a better scenario than having 100 percent deficit in 15 months. So if I consider this stochasticity, that will be a better one. This is ranking. That means if I consider stochasticity in surface water and groundwater, that has average deficit is only 5% for 200 years. So this is comparison between my, because I have run a simple FLP model also. It's very easy to run a FLP model, single stroke, you will get the result. Whereas stochastic dynamic programming, it is not like that. I have to model it, I have to discretize, I have to run the model for various scenarios, I have to generate my inflow and then I have to find the scenarios. On comparing this, but still researchers consider SDP is the best way of modeling because it, it says that is the reality. But uh, as a modeler, it is very difficult to do this modeling. But when we compare the result of what we have received through our FLP model, which I have explained in the first class and the SDP model, I think this FLP model gives fairly a better result or uh, we can say not better result, at least an equivalent result of this than that of this complicated stochastic dynamic program. That is where we say that soft computing techniques are better. It is, it is like that, no, uh, uh, I have to reach that place instead of going by steps, I can go by an elevator also. So my effort on this modeling is reduced. The time required to do this modeling for if I apply this to, reach, to achieve the same result, it's very easy for me to do a uh, soft computing technique of FLP rather than doing this stochastic dynamic programming. This stochastic dynamic programming requires at least two years for a researcher to develop, to get the data and to get the result. For FLP model in three months or four months, you can finish it. So the time required to get the desired solution is faster in soft computing techniques. That is why soft computing techniques are getting importance. Now everybody will be, requires a better result in short time. So rather than going in for SDP model, we can go in for an FLP model, even the complicated conjunctive use studies. That is the major output from this work. So as a conclusion, the study shows that stochasticity of groundwater availability needs to be accounted for conjunctive use. In previous cases, I have not considered stochasticity. It is only ranges. Considering ranges is something different from considering the stochasticity. Many people have accepted that if you do stochastic modeling, that will give you a better result. But curse of dimensionality restrict us. I, if I consider my storages as 100 ranges, I, I can run my system without any deficit. But it is impossible to model with even with the advanced computing machines. So the clustering approach to group the wells having homogeneous water levels has improved the modeling time of stochastic. Otherwise, no, I may not be able to do this stochastic dynamic program. It is not possible to solve that 644 by 644 matrix. <coughs> it is not only one 644 by 644. It is 644 by 644 for 12 months. And then I have to keep this result for at least 4 or 5 years until I receive my steady state policy. So that much storage in the RAM. It is not the storage. See SDP model many people misunderstood. We have 1 GB, 2 GB, 3 GB, 4 GB. That is not the storage required for my SDP model to run. It is the RAM capacity. It is not the storage capacity. It is the area where my computer is working. I have to keep this in a temporary memory. So this temporary memory is not sufficient. It's very difficult. My, either my system gets crashed or I have to stop it. You know the number of combinations, it works out to be 1 lakh or 2 lakhs. So I'll, I have to search my solution within this space. So the combined stochastic dynamic programming, consider the stochasticity of inflows and groundwater has resulted in better performance and less irrigation deficit and also with less frequency. 
the 10 percent result in a large system of 400 kilometer square is a better scenario. The stochastic consideration of surface water has also improved the result when stochastic variation in inflows is considered. Right? Only even if you consider only the stochasticity in the inflow also and consider the groundwater as the deterministic that also has improved the solutions. Right? This is all the result. This is the last result. It was also found that simple fuzzy linear programming model can substitute the detailed stochastic dynamic programming model in deriving the optimal operational policies. Right? So, this will reduce the time effort and all these things.